our main purpose for Manuka Health is to produce a natural product. And you can see today where we've got massive Manuka, it's concentrated, there's nothing else here, and that is what we aim to do. I am the general manager for their beekeeping arm in the wire wrapper. My background in beekeeping, it is 37 years, and it feels like it's about two. I actually love it. It's, it's, it's a passion. My family um, history in beekeeping is, goes back a long way. It actually, my daughter is now a beekeeper and she's the fourth generation beekeeper, which is pretty good. You cannot leave beekeeping, if you, it's in your blood. Um, my wife is, is in the firm, she, she's right up with it, she knows as much about beekeeping as I do. The thing that a lot of people are very interested in is the fact that we actually produce Manuka honey out here where it is isolated and not in areas where there are pockets of Manuka and other pockets of clover or other alternative floral sources. We produce 100% Manuka. This particular block here is called Mount Adams and it used to be run with sheep farming. It was cleared and they ran sheep. The land is not used for anything else other than bee farming now. We, we, we call it our bee farm because that's solely what we were actually doing here. It's remote, the soil is very sour and that is what the manuka loves to grow in. It's the only place that we're likely to find soil so sour because of no fertiliser. The lead up to the honey flow for the manuka, we need to have the manuka with wet feet, so it's got to come through the spring with nice wet feet, but once the manuka starts flowering, we need to have some warm weather for the nectar to flow into the top of the, uh, the flower. The weeks leading up to harvest would be the most nerve-wracking weeks I have in my whole year. I can handle my staff, I can handle everything, but I can't handle the weather. We spend that whole year preparing for this little period of time. And if that doesn't um, pan out too well, we're not very happy chappies. <laughs> the manuka starts flowering about the middle of um, November. The flower starts at the very top of the manuka tree and it slowly works its way down. So you can see on here, once the flower opens and the nectar flows and the nectar sits into the very tip of the flower, the bees come along, suck that out, take that into their little honey sack, take that back to their hives. As Soon as that flower drops off because it's, it's, it's had it, what will happen is the manuka flower, you can see here, all the little buds will continue opening going down the manuka tree for the next six weeks. Then it leaves a seed pod to, to drop, which actually creates a lot more regrowth for us here in the bush. That's why we're so thick. The regrowth over here, over the years, has just been fantastic. The visitors' reactions when they come out here are amazing. We've had, we had a lady and a man from Malaysia and I brought them out here for a day. We had a hell of a good day and they loved seeing the wildness. They'd never ever understood that there was anything like this and to come out to New Zealand's clean, green, natural forest, you know, we felt good because we feel good about being here but for them to come out and have a look at where we produce our product, it's uh, really enthusiastic, yeah, that motivates us.